latest ITV news in the Time Tees region with Ian Payne and Amy Lee. TV News Time Tees. Tonight's headlines. Anger and heartbreak. Joanne Tulip's mother on her disappointment at learning her daughter's murderer is set to be released from prison. Totally shocked. Given what we heard at the public parole hearing, when we thought, well, this man can never be released. He hasn't changed in 26 years. Stronger together, the delayed Middlesbrough Mellor sends a message of unity and defiance to those who tried to divide the town. Heroes welcome. Our Paralympic athletes return from Paris with a haul of medals coming home to the northeast. And running in the rain, we'll look back at a wet and wild Great North Run as tens of thousands tackled the famous route. First tonight, a killer who stabbed his victim, a Northumberland woman, 60 times, is set to be released from prison. Stephen Ling murdered Joanne Tulip in Stamfordham in Northumberland on Christmas Day 1997. He was jailed for life the following year after he admitted to her murder. In a moment, we'll hear from Joanne's mother on her reaction. But first, this report from Tom Barton. In 1997, Joanne Tulip was just 29 years old, a young woman with her life ahead of her. But that life was taken by Stephen Ling, a 23-year-old farm labourer from Stamford in Northumberland. After meeting Ling in a pub on Christmas Eve 1997, Joanne travelled the short distance to his house here on Widrington Drive. There, in a frenzied attack, he stabbed her more than 60 times before setting fire to the bed that her body was lying on. He admitted her murder and was sentenced to life in jail. The judge saying that he should never be released so long as he constituted a danger to women. Today, though, came the decision that 26 years after he was jailed, Ling will be freed. The parole board reporting that after considering the circumstances of Mr Ling's offending, the progress made while in custody, the risk management plan and other material in the dossier comprising over 1,100 pages of evidence, as well as the oral evidence obtained at the hearing, the panel concluded that Mr Ling met the test for release. A decision that legal experts say won't have been taken lightly. A panel like this will be chaired by a very experienced criminal justice professional, almost certainly a retired circuit judge. So these are people with decades of experience of the criminal justice system. They're not a soft touch. They've seen it all before. They know when people are telling the truth and they're not. Anybody can make a mistake, but this will have been considered very carefully indeed. The Justice Secretary today said she had asked officials to look at whether the decision to release Ling should be reconsidered by the parole board. For now, though, Joanne's family must come to terms with the prospect of her killer walking free in the next few weeks. Stamford. With Joanne's mother, Doreen Salisbury, and began by asking her for her memories of her daughter. Joanne was was such a bubbly, happy girl. Happy girl. Um, she never suspected the bad person. She only she only saw, saw the good in people. Just very happy, and I miss the mother daughter. Our relationship. And you fought for such a long time to try to avoid hearing the news that you have been told today. Um, what is your initial reaction to the news you've been told that Stephen Ling 
is being recommended for release. Totally shocked. Given what we heard at the public parole hearing, and we thought, well, this man can never be released. He hasn't changed in 26 years. The, the parole board are very senior, experienced people who will have seen many, many cases before. Do we perhaps have to accept their expertise on this and that people can change? No. And this is a guy, you know, I've campaigned for 25 years and they're still are not treating him as a sex offender. It's absolutely shocking. What was your overriding emotion, Doreen, when you received this news? Is it frustration, disappointment, anger? How do you feel? All of those things, Ian. Very angry and just unbelievable what I've heard this morning. The, with all the family that were at the hearing, because it was a public hearing, so all these things that we heard about and we wouldn't have heard normally. My God, how can they release somebody like him? today's news I sense the anger in you is strong and you're likely to keep campaigning this is not the end of the road for you <laughs> no um, I am project driven Ian and this is my project and when I have a project and I know it's wrong I will go at it and at it till the bitter end for you and in Joanne's memory. You've got to fight to get justice these days. N nobody takes any notice. Joanne and her memory that keeps you so driven. I just need to get justice for her. She didn't, she would never realise that a monster like this was hiding away, it was living in Stamperdon. And I just have to try and get try and get Mr. Ling kept in prison. Thank you so much for talking to us today and for sharing your feelings with us. Um, I know it's been a very, very significant day for you and for your family. Thank you. Thank you. of a young woman who was killed and her body then lay undiscovered at Brimham Rocks in North Yorkshire for 14 years, calling for her killer to be denied parole to an open prison. Gemma Simpson was just 23 when she was killed by Martin Bell, who buried her at the beauty spot. Bell is due before a parole board tomorrow, but Gemma's sisters are opposing any move to allowing greater freedoms. A 29-year-old man has died after taking part in the Great North Run yesterday. He collapsed during the race and received immediate medical attention but passed away in hospital later on. The Great Run Company say their sincerest condolences are with his friends and family. The government says Middlesbrough Council has made significant progress in its performance. The council was put under formal review in January 2023 due to serious concerns over governance. That's now ended. The government says there have been positive changes to key staff and the council's financial position has improved, but it warns that significant financial risks remain. Next tonight, to a charity that helps women into work. It's expanding its services and it's moving into a new home. Yes, SmartWorks provide interview coaching, peer support, and they assist with professional workwear for women who are looking to get into employment. They say their new building in Newcastle will let them support even more people back into the workplace. Amy Sutton reports. Think back to your last job interview. What did you wear? How did you prepare? clothes equal confidence for so many women and for those who find the prospect of affording a new capsule wardrobe a tough pill to swallow help is on hand 
Smartworks is based in Newcastle, but has helped women get back into work right across the northeast for six years. Demand for its services has increased. Women are referred here by job centres, employment schemes, shelters and mental health charities. To meet that demand, Smartworks has moved into a new base, which has tripled the size. It's a very needed service. We unfortunately have higher than average unemployment rates in our region. We find that on average, a woman that's accessing our service has applied for 33 jobs before securing one interview. 33 jobs. Like, that is insane. I don't think I've applied for 33 jobs in my life. So imagine how lacking in confidence you would feel. I often say we're a very small charity, but we're punching above our weight. Last year, Smartworks Newcastle supported, clothed and coached 700 women back into the workplace. And by this time next year, they hope to boost that number to 1,000. And we will do that. And it a long-term supporter of this charity's mission and values is entrepreneur and Dragon's Den star, Sarah Davies. She knows all about female empowerment and making an impression in the boardroom. I dress all the time as a reflection of me because I know when I've got that bit of imposter syndrome, when I'm when I'm not feeling it, I can put the clothes on and I can almost not hide behind them, but it can make me feel a certain way, which will make me act a certain way, which will get me to where I want to be. And there are so many different reasons why women could be out of work. It's sad that the service is needed more now than ever, but it's brilliant that the Northeast community have risen to the challenge and said, how can we come out in force and really be there for those women? The team here helps to break the toughest barrier and overcome the hardest hurdle, regaining lost confidence, whether that's rehearsing interviews or having a personal stylist prepare for the big day. So you see the faces, you know, of the, the happy customers that come in. How important is it, the work that Smartworks does? Oh, so important. It's just, it's an opportunity for them. And actually, some of the steps that these women have to go through just to get that interview or to get childcare cover, even to come into the centre, it's their moment of, it's all about them. You know, for some of them, that's been a really long time since they've had a moment that's all about them. But it's hugely important. So happy faces all around. Yeah. Now they're suited, booted and dressed to impress. It's up to these women to go from strength to strength. Amy Sutton, ITV News in Newcastle. continues after us at 6.30 tonight with Mary. Coming up in the programme, the Princess of Wales relief as she completes chemotherapy. Catherine says staying cancer-free is now her focus and she looks forward to gradually getting back to work. The Prime Minister faces rising pressure to reverse plans to cut back winter fuel payments accused by unions of picking the pockets of pensioners. And a journey weighted with gold. British Paralympians return home with a mighty medal haul. Do join me for those stories and more at 6.30. The organisers of Middlesbrough May there say the event this weekend has been a real success with thousands of people enjoying two days of celebration and entertainment. The Mela had to be postponed in August on the grounds of public safety. It was scheduled to take place just days after the riots which left parts of the town centre badly vandalised. It went ahead this weekend and our correspondent Rachel Bullock was there. <laughs> and community, the heart of Middlesbrough Mellor, this year shown off in all its glory. Thousands flocked to the town's Albert Park weeks later than originally planned. Postponed due to the unrest which blighted Middlesbrough in early August, it finally went ahead this weekend bigger and better. I think this is the true Middlesbrough and you can probably see on the message behind me on the screens and on the stage, it's all about solidarity. So Mellor represents unity and it's all about a gathering. The word Mellor actually means gathering. So for us to come out and gather here once a year, all you know, diverse communities who have made Middlesbrough their home, it's essential for us. Visitors here agree. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. First thing that I said was, can't believe they've scuppered that. Uh, ridiculous, it's very cohesive community, really, uh, in normal times. 
And this is just fabulous for being spirit. It's pretty fun. Like, it's all lovely here. Like, especially the rides. Like, especially the Twister. I love that part. Just a shame uh, it was cancelled the time before, but it's really good that it's been put back on again. Brings everyone back together, the community, and yeah, it's a really good day for everybody. The diversity and all the people coming together looks really nice. And I uh, hope it continues. You can see you've got lovely stalls around, all families here with the kids and the plants and the babies and everyone. They're enjoying the fun fair, they're enjoying the mellow. We're soon going to have some nice pumping music and then get everyone going. You name it, it's all at Borough Mellor today. A bumper year with more to come. This one has been going for 34 years, so it's our longest running in the UK now. And we were recently mentioned in Parliament, which was very important to us, because we were recognised by the Home Secretary as to how important medals are to embed social cohesion. So Mills and Mellors are a great advert for that. A weekend of unity and celebration, enjoyed by so many here. Rachel Bullock, ITV News, Middlesbrough. Yeah, that's like a great weekend. Good to see the mail going ahead. Right, it's time now to look back at the rest of the weekend. Simon is here with the sport. Zero Accounting Software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. We'll look back on the Great North Run in a moment, but the Paris Paralympics also reached their finish line at the weekend, Simon. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Paris have been great hosts, as they were for the Olympics, and we've had some great performances from North East athletes. The Paralympics GB team made its way home, as you've been seeing today, after finishing second in the medals table in Paris. On the train across the channel today, there were 49 gold medals, 44 silvers and 31 bronzes. Now, one of the silvers came from the men's wheelchair basketball team. That meant there was no fairy tale ending for Teesside's Terry Bywater in his first final at his seventh Paralympics. GB lost to the USA. But well done, Terry, who's now got a silver to go with four bronze medals from previous games. Stockton swimmer Faye Rogers won gold in the 100 metres butterfly. Faye tried out for the Tokyo Olympic swimming team before suffering injuries in a car crash that left doctors saying she'd never compete again. So her gold came at the end of an incredible journey, and she's been taking good care of that medal on her journey home. The cases are really massive, and they're really bulky, so I uh, kind of can't really fit them in a bag. So uh, obviously the medals, you don't want to get them scratched or like dented or whatnot, so... Uh, a sock is the preferred method of transporting the medals. Pristine condition, like this with a sock. <laughs> so yeah, um, it is a clean sock, I promise. Yeah. I've had like quite the journey over the last three years. So uh, yeah, I only really got into power swimming like 18 months ago. Um, so yeah, to be holding a gold medal is insane. Paris Games came to an end this weekend and so did the distinguished career of one of our greatest Paralympians. Stephen Miller, MBE, completed in the club throw event for the final time in Coventry at the Cerebral Palsy Sport National Championships. He won, of course he did. Cramlington's finest ends his career at the age of 44. He competed in six Paralympic Games, won six Paralympic medals and three of them were gold. He was also a multiple world and European champion and an absolute inspiration. And before you move on, Simon, I'm going to add my congratulations to Stephen on his retirement. What a fantastic career he's enjoyed, he really has. That throw at the weekend, I'm told as well, despite there being not a lot of competition for Stephen, would have um, been about eighth in the Paralympic Games. <laughs> and, <laughs> so uh, he's still got it in him, but he's retiring. We're looking forward to his retirement party on Wednesday. We certainly are. We'll move on to football. Harrogate are struggling in League Two. Gateshead are bossing the National League and there was a full range of emotions on the opening day of the new Women's Championship season. Newcastle United's first game in the Women's Championship after back-to-back -back promotions was away to London City Lionesses. And the Magpies' first goal at this level was nicely tucked away by Shania Hales. But it was probably only to be expected there'd be a few lessons to learn on the first day at Big School and London were level by half-time. 
Hales probably should have won the match for Newcastle, but a 1-1 draw away from home was an OK start. Durham made a winning start. Molly Lambert gave them a first-half lead as home to Sheffield United with a really good finish from outside the area. The Blades were level by half-time after the mother of all six-yard box scrambles, but the home side won 2-1 thanks to a debut goal from Carly Johns. Sunderland did not see this coming. Last season, the Black Cats were brilliant and narrowly missed out on promotion to the Super League, but they began this season on the wrong end of an absolute thumping away to Birmingham City. An opening day 5-0 disaster for Sunderland. Staying with the women's game, Middlesbrough are top of the WPL Division 1 North after a 3-2 win away to Leeds United. On to the men. Harrogate aren't winning many games and they aren't getting much luck in League 2. Ellis Taylor's free kick might have won them the game at Cheltenham, but they lost the game agonisingly in stoppage time. Gateshead stay top of the National League and they're making it look easy. The 2-0 win over Barnet was the very definition of straightforward. They coped without manager Rob Elliott on Saturday. He was missing because of illness. Gateshead will hope they don't have to learn to cope without him for other reasons. Elliott is the bookie's favourite for the vacant manager's job at Carlisle United. York City are just three points and four places behind Gateshead. The Minster men won 2-0 at Wheelstone on Saturday. Their opening goal from Ashley Nathaniel George was one for him to tell the grandchildren about. Hartlepool United aren't going badly either. They've only lost once this season, but they draw too many and they don't score enough, and that was the way of things again on Saturday, as the home game against Halifax ended in a goalless draw. On to the Great North Run then, where a record number of runners took part in this year's race. Here's a look back at yesterday's action. It's that finish line feeling, does it? Congratulations if you ran yesterday. We hope you are wearing your medal with pride. Now, it was wet for the run yesterday. I think it's going to improve. Let's have a look at the weather. Here's Nick. Record highs forecasted. Tui sponsors ITV Time Tees Weather. It's already feeling cooler out there, but you ain't felt nothing yet. The first autumn chill is on the way. Moody skies, first thing this morning. It did try to brighten up today, though the cloud tonight will be rolling back in with a chance of rain once again from a developing area of low pressure. And this is what's going to make the difference and turn things colder into tomorrow, particularly once this, this cold front has moved on through tomorrow morning. Because once it does, we open the door to the blues on the air mass chart here, that significantly colder air moving in, enhanced by a stronger wind as well, and some chilly nights on the way too. So it's all going to feel very different for the rest of the week. The cold then, enhanced by the wind, at least there'll be some sunshine. There'll be a scattering of showers, but certainly not particularly wet. Uh, if you catch a shower, though, it could be on the heavy side. Our breaks of rain starting to filter in tonight, but they're going to be very patchy in nature. So some spots will essentially have a dry night with just the old splash of rain around. The breeze continuing to freshen overnight. Double figure temperatures for now, but some chilly nights are certainly on the way for the rest of the week. This line of bright colours, some heavy downfalls moving through with gusty winds tomorrow morning. That's the cold front. So once that's gone through, yes, it brightens up. It's going to feel colder and much fresher out there with quite a gusty wind as well. Sunshine and the scattering of showers up to 15 degrees Celsius, though most of us will fall short of that. 
these are the temperatures as we kick off on Wednesday morning. So well down into single figures and by Thursday morning. It can even be a touch colder than that as well. Temperatures slowly recover next weekend with that change of wind direction. And that comes with a chance of rain. That's your forecast. Tui sponsored ITV Tainty's Weather. Thank you, Nick. There's your news, sport and weather to start the week. Next up, it's the national and international news tonight with Mary. Yes, and I'll be back here at half past ten tonight with the late news. I hope to see you then. For both of us, take care. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.